Hi, this is Lauren Stein, the Manager of Implementation, and today we're going to cover the purchasing process from creating a new PO to invoicing. You can use the reorder wizard in Business Alerts to create batch POs, but we'll stick to the basics today. So to create a new PO in Activate, you can either use the purchasing menu and go to purchase order, or you can use the icon bar, the purchase order button. To create a new PO, click the new button. The PO number is automatically generated based on the document numbering setup in Configuration Management, and the requested date defaults to the days to ship in the Purchasing Options of Configuration Manager. We've also got the PO status. Right now it's set to Entered. The status of the PO can show the users where this purchase order is in the process. And you have the options of entered, request for quote, pending approval, issued, and then you also have completed and canceled. Once the status is set to issued, the PO is officially in process, which means it's ready to receive an invoice. So let's go ahead and set it to issued. So we'll need to select a supplier. You can either manually type the supplier ID in the supplier field or select from the lookup. And we're going to use Adam's paper. And then next we'll also need to select the warehouse that the vendor needs to ship the inventory to. It's defaulting to F based on the purchasing options, but we also have these other warehouses available, but we're going to leave it to F. Feel free to override the supplier or ship to you address if needed. Typically customers aren't going to need to be doing this though. It's going to just default to what's set up. And the contact information is based on the vendor contact information from QuickBooks. So if you need to override that information, you can do so on this window as well in the contact box. The same thing goes for terms and ship via, as well as requested by and approved by if you wanted to include those fields in your process if you're starting from entered all the way to issued for the statuses. So let's go ahead and add items to the PO. We're going to use a mixed bag of products so you can see how to process each one. So we're going to start with A121. I manually typed it and pressed tab, but you can select the product from the lookup window when your cursor is in the product ID field. The price defaults to the vendor price specified on that item, and that can also be overridden on the purchase order. TB202 is a lot numbered item. We're going to order 10. PC20 is a serialized item. We're going to order two of those. And then B85-1 is a non-inventoried item, so I just wanted to show you how to process inventoried versus non-inventoried as well as if you're using lot or serial numbers. That changes the requirements on the receipt portion of the purchasing process. You can also override any special instructions at the bottom of the PO. This will print on the purchase order whenever you print or email it. The additional information tab will allow the user to set a different requested date if it's different from the default, as well as a promise not before and not after date. And you can also override the FOB. If you have any custom fields, those will also show on the additional info tab. Okay, so let's save and print the PO so we can see what it looks like. You have print purchase order or email purchase order as default options. When you print the purchase order, it previews the report on screen. And you can see all the information that you have listed on the PO, as well as your company information and the total. So let's close that report. And if you send it as an email, it'll put a PDF attachment on the email so that is sent to your vendor. Okay, so once you receive the items in your warehouse, you'll need to reopen the PO and click receive. That option to receive in full is checked in my configuration manager. So every item that was inventoried is listed on this receipt session. Make sure to set the session date to match the date you actually received the items into your warehouse. You can set the document date to that same date if it's different than today or set it to today just so you have a reference on when you actually created this document. So as you can see here, the received quantity pulls in based on what's listed on the PO. The lot numbered item has the full quantity of 10 and the serialized item is broken out to be one line per one unit, and that's because a serialized item requires a specific serial number for each unit. So let's go ahead and say that, well, we received two lots of TP202, so we're going to change this to five, and we're also going to give it a lot number. And dash 
backslash 2 for the second one. Okay, and we're going to do something similar for PC20. I'm going to put a random number here. And do 1 above that for the second one. So you can either print the report here to verify this information, or you can go ahead and post. We're going to go ahead and post because this is all correct. Post the inventory transaction, hit yes. We will be prompted to preview the report. So if we preview, this is all the information selected in the receipt transaction. It shows you the received quantities for each, as well as a lot serial information, unit costs, stock quantity, and the amount as well as the PO and vendor information. Close that report, and we'll close the receipt. So let's enter the vendor invoice now. Typically this is going to be received after you've actually got the product in your warehouse. Sometimes you receive the invoice before you receive the actual product. So you know whenever you actually receive that invoice, you can go ahead and invoice the PO we always recommend an invoice after you've received in case the prices change. But let's say that we, you know, it's a future date and we have received the PO invoice. So we open the purchase order. We've already got it open here, but if you needed to open it again from a new window, you would just hit the lookup, find your PO number, which we know is 1271, and select it. Then click the invoice button up on the header. So on here, we can go straight to entering the invoice number as it's shown on the vendor invoice itself. And we'll also select the invoice date. The due date will default based on the terms listed at the header. So now we can review the approved price and amounts for each line. This is going to default based on what's been received in Activate. So all the inventory items, you can see that they've received in full. So we've got received one, approved one. TP202 is 10, PC20 is 2. We didn't change any of the prices and we're not going to do that on this example, but you can override the price if necessary by highlighting the field and entering in a new price and pressing tab. You can also override the amount approved. And so you can see both ways as well as the quantity that you're approving for the specific PO. Let's set that back to 2. And B85-1 is non-inventoried, so that it defaults to zero because the received quantity is zero since it's non-inventoried. So override the approved quantity to be one, which is what was outstanding. And you can see the total at the bottom updates that. And the additional info tab has the transaction date, the discount date, reference information, as well as the shipping information, the requested approved by information, the document itself, and any custom fields that you had on the PO invoice. Now, sometimes your purchase invoice is going to include an other amount. So to make sure that the vendor bill matches the bill that the vendor has actually sent you, let's add those amounts to the other amounts tab. This is gonna be freight, customs, duties, any other cost or other amount that's listed on the PO invoice that's not included in the line amounts. So we're gonna have $5 of freight if you have the landed cost module, you can check this landed cost, which will save the PO invoice and open landed cost transaction for you to allocate this $5 across the receipts. If you don't have landed costs and you just want to do expenses information, you would select an expense account. We'll select miscellaneous and then we'll save. So now you can see that we have 147 approved, other amount of $5, a possible discount of 304, and then we also have a total of 152. So when you're ready, you'll actually hit create invoice. If there isn't any remaining quantities outstanding on the PO, you'll be prompted to complete it. If you're creating a partial invoice, you won't see this message. It will just create this invoice and then you just close the purchase invoice in the PO window until you're ready to create the next PO invoice. So we're going to hit yes. Now there's no more detail because nothing else is outstanding. Close that and the purchase order is marked as complete. Now the next sync that you run, you'll see a journal entry for the receipt that we posted, which is going to debit your inventory 
and credit your purchases account specified on the warehouse. You'll also see the vendor bill being created in QuickBooks for Adams Paper, and the bill itself will reconcile the amount out of the purchases account and into accounts payable. Any payments to the vendor are going to be entered separately in QuickBooks. So this concludes the purchasing process when creating POs manually. Thank you for your time and have a great day.